All of us rely on emails one way or another, but these emails take space. As they pile up, everything gets slower. Emails don't get through to you, and one day you open your mailbox and you see this. So what do you do? How do you clean up an overflowing mailbox, especially after years of collecting messages? Fortunately, it's not difficult once you know a few tricks. Let me show you. Let's start by finding out what your current mailbox size is. To do that, just click on any folder in your mailbox and then on File. This is gonna take you to the account information and under Mailbox Settings, you'll see the overall size. For IMAP or POP accounts, you need to right click on the mailbox and select Data File Properties. Then click on Folder Size. The interesting number here is the total size, including the subfolders. This is how big your mailbox currently is. If it's above five gigabytes, you should consider working on it. So how can you reduce your mailbox size? Well, let's go through the options. Option one is to use manual cleanup. A good way to start is always to empty your trash. Just right click on your deleted items and select empty folder. It will permanently delete the items in there. This can't be reversed, so obviously make sure you don't need those items anymore. In my case, I'm sure, and I'm gonna confirm with OK. Next step is to archive old messages that you may need access to at some point. Often you need to keep items for a certain number of years for tax and legal reasons, so you don't wanna delete them, but you also don't want them taking up space in your mailbox. That's where archiving comes in. Archiving physically removes old items from your Outlook mailbox to a separate data file or PSD file on your local computer. So let me show you how you can do that. Let's go back to File and from the Tools dropdown, let's select Clean up old items. From the dialog box here, we'll select the second option to archive this folder and all subfolders. You can select individual folders like inbox or sent items, but I usually just click on the mailbox on top, which means it's gonna go through everything. The main setting here is the cutoff date. So all items older than the date that you select here are gonna be moved out. And they're gonna be moved to the archive file you can specify below. You can change the location and the name of the file with browse. I'll just go with the default, then hit OK, and archiving will get to work. Now, let me show you where you can find the archive messages again in case you need them. Let's go back to Home, and now you'll see this additional folder called Archives. All the folders the messages were in before will be available, so it doesn't dump everything in one big folder, and of course, you can use Search to find what you need in here. This way, you still have access to the old emails in Outlook on this computer and they don't take up space in your mailbox. But keep in mind, they're not gonna be available in Outlook online or your mobile. Some don't like the idea to let Outlook decide what to move. So let me show you another manual way you can offload items from your mailbox. And that's by creating personal folders. Technically, it's very similar to archiving because personal folders are also data files on your local computer. Except here, you move the items yourself and you can create your own folder structure. To create a personal folder, go to File, and then in the dropdown for Account Settings, select Account Settings. Let's go to the second tab, Data Files, and click on Add. Now you can give the data file a name or change the location. I recommend keeping these data and archive files in the same location. I'm gonna tell you why at the end of the video. When you're done, click on OK, and that's it. Now you created your own personal folder. Let's close this, and we're gonna see this folder show up in the folder pane. Now you can structure this folder as you want. I'll just create a new folder called Contracts. And now you can select messages or entire folders and move them out of your mailbox into this personal folder. This way you have full control over what's being removed and archived. So these are the manual cleanup options in Outlook. Just remember that manual archiving and personal folders are based on local files on your computer. So whatever you move into these files is not gonna be available to you on another computer or online. Now let's take a look at another option you have, which is auto-archiving. Having to do this manual approach over and over can get quite annoying. A more efficient way to get this done 
in Outlook is to use auto archiving. This feature has been there forever. I think it was introduced in Outlook 2003. Based on your defined settings, it runs in the background and it goes through all your mailbox folders. It then physically moves old emails out of these folders to a separate data file or PSD file on your local computer. Just like manual archiving, except once it's set up, you don't have to think about it anymore. The challenge with auto archive is understanding the settings. It's important to get them right, but unfortunately it's not really intuitive. Don't worry though, just follow along here and we'll have you up and running in no time. To access the auto archive settings, go to file, options, and then select advanced. Auto archive is here right below Outlook start and exit. In case you don't see it, you're either in a corporate environment and your admin has disabled this feature, or you have an exchange account and online archiving has been enabled for you. In these cases, Outlook will archive according to your corporate policies and you can't use auto archive. Otherwise, over here, you'll see auto archive settings. When you click it, you get this dialog box. With the first checkbox, you turn on auto archive and you can specify how often it should run. If you want to be notified before it starts the process, select the prompt before auto archive checkbox. This way you'll be able to cancel it if you need to. Delete expired items only refers to emails which have an expiry date. This is sometimes used for time sensitive messages. You may want expired emails to disappear. If so, check this box. During auto archive, we want to archive or delete items and we can specify this further below. Show archive folder should be checked. This way archives will be easily accessible to you in the folder pane. Then you can specify the default age at which you want items to be archived. I'm going to go with 12 months here, but check what works for you. We want our items to be moved and not permanently deleted. It already has a default folder, which is fine for me. If you want to use a different folder, click browse. Only check permanently delete if you're sure you really want to get rid of these items because it's going to bypass the deleted items folder. And finally, we get the option to apply these default settings to all folders. This is important to understand. By clicking this button, these default settings we just changed are going to be applied to all your folders. This way you don't have to make changes for each folder individually. If you have a lot of folders you want to archive the same way, this may be the right choice. But if you want to have more control over the process, then don't use this button. For example, let's say you have several folders that you want to auto archive after three months, others maybe after six months, some not at all. And for some, you may want the content to be deleted after a certain time. If that's the case, it's better to apply the settings on folder level. So let's do that. I'm not going to click the button apply to all, but instead I'm just going to hit OK to save these settings. So let's say you want to define specific archiving options for the sent items. Just right click on the folder and select properties. Then go to the auto archive tab and here you're going to see three options. Not to archive this folder, archive according to the default settings, that's the settings we just looked at. When you click on default archive settings, it's going to take you back to that window. For folder specific settings, select the third option. Let's say we want sent items to be moved after three months, so I'm going to change the time period here to three months and the default archive folder is fine for me for this. When you're done, click on OK. Let's also set the options for deleted items. Here I don't want to archive old items, but I want them to be permanently deleted. Right click on the folder, go to default archive settings and select the third option again. Let's say for deleted items, I want them to be cleaned out after four months. And because I don't want to move, but rather delete these, I select the last option down here, permanently delete old items. Just go through your folders that you want to archive and make your changes. Now, I admit that getting started with auto archiving in Outlook is not the most intuitive experience, but once you get it set up the way you want, it's going to work quietly in the background, freeing up space for you. Now let's quickly talk about backup. Regardless if you go with personal folders, manual or auto archiving, all of these solutions move old messages to a local file on your computer. 
Now, the risk here is that hard drives fail, files get corrupted. So it's really important that you back up these PSD files to an external hard drive or any other storage solution. That's why I recommend keeping all your PSD files in one place. This makes it easier to back them up. And one last advice, I often see people putting the archive PSD files on a company network drive to access them directly with their Outlook. Now, I know this may be tempting to take advantage of a central backup, but don't do that. Connecting to a PSD file over the network can result in poor performance or even data corruption. Microsoft also states that this is an unsupported configuration. So these are the different ways to clean up your mailbox. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. And if you want to find out more about how to take control of your inbox, check out this video. Thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.